So let me just check that uh, I am uh, streaming. Let me just uh, quick check. Okay, so sorry about that. A uh, bit of a bit of a disaster, really. So what happened there was I tried to lift up the device that I'm using to do the streaming, and in the process of doing that, I broke one of the connections between this and the laptop, and the stream died. Uh, not much you can do about that, perhaps. Perhaps a lesson learned there actually is the. The GoStream device, this, this device here, can stream directly from itself. I could have plugged my Ethernet cable. You don't see, I put, could have plugged the Ethernet cable in here, and then this would have done the streaming. As, as I've got it set up here, I'm connecting to a laptop to do the stream. And uh, it's that connection to the laptop that got broken when I tried to lift it up. So let's start at the beginning. This video is about the OC GoStream uh, duet this device here and I decided to do this as a stream because uh, That's how you're going to use this device in practice Now how does this differ from the black magic Artems that we're all very familiar with? So this is an Artem mini um, and the big difference really is that on the Artems and uh, these similar devices the smaller ones at least is This one's an HDMI one. There are SDI versions the output, I only have a single HDMI output. And because it only has a single HDMI out, I can't have both the multi-view out, which allows you to see all your source cameras, and a clean HDMI out at the same time. It's one or the other. Meanwhile, the Ghost Stream um, from OC has two HDMI outputs, and those two HDMI outputs can be independently configured. And currently, I've got um, one of the H or the HDMI output here is going to my uh, monitor here, and it's giving me the multi-viewer output. But I have a second HDMI output that I could take as a clean feed if I was doing something that was going to go to a vision mixer, to, to, a, to a video wall or a screen or something like that for a typical live production where you're not streaming. Maybe you're doing a conference and you want to put the footage up on a big screen. So having both multi-view, so you can see all of your sources, your, uh, your cameras, and you can actually have up to five cameras coming into this device, um, your still frames, video player, and everything else on the multi-viewer, plus a separate HDMI out to feed that screen or a recorder or anything else, it was really what drove me to go to this device rather than the, the Artem Minis. So looking at the device in a little bit more depth, what else is different about this compared to an Artem? Well, if you look at down this side, you'll see that we have SDI inputs. So there are four SDI inputs as well as four HDMI inputs on the back. Now, you can't use eight inputs at the same time, you have to select whether each input is either HDMI or SDI, but it does give me that flexibility to have both SDI and HDMI cameras feeding this. So right now, I've actually got the main camera as my FX6, and that's coming into it as SDI, and then the camera that's up there doing the, the top shot, that's coming in on HDMI, it's uh, actually an FX30. So it gives me a lot more flexibility with my inputs. I don't have to carry extra converters to go from SDI to HDMI and things like that. And so it has a great deal more flexibility. And I think especially if you're doing longer cable runs, the SDI generally is going to be more reliable. Um, yes, you have optical HDMI and things like that now, but um, which, it, which is better. But I still prefer HDMI for that reliability over longer runs. Now, other things that we have, if we look at the top of this, it is very similar to an Artem, if you're familiar with that. We do have a, um, a lever to do your blending between different sources, if that's what you want to do. So, I mean, I can, I can blend, there you go, blending between the, um, the video, the built-in video player. So that's one of the nice things that it does actually have is a built-in video player. So there is actually an SD card slot down here at the front. Takes a, You want really a V60 or a V90 SD card. 
And then you can put H.264 video clips on that for playout. So you can use it as a video player to play out your clips. Um, there's also, um, what else do we have? Uh, still frames, so you can load it up with, so you can load it up with still frames um, for bumpers, for keying and things like that. So right now, uh, what I could do is I can bring up the um, downstream keyer and bring that on air. And now you've got the downstream keyer putting my name logo over the corner of the image. And also very much like the um, Artems, you have various picture-in-picture -picture and keying effects. So it has a built-in chroma keyer. It has a, a DVE, so you can um, rescale the images. Um, one of the things I've got set up here is a super source. So if I bring up um, super source, you should actually let me just cut to it. So on the super source mode, I've got the two uh, my two inputs uh, both going into DVEs doing a side-by-side -side image like this, and I can create that as a separate um, super source, and it makes it very easy to, to cut to and from that to bring it up uh, as, as a live feed. Now, other things we've got, so audio-wise, so right now I'm taking audio one. So if I press the audio one button, you'll see that it says audio one, let me get out of the way, you'll see that it says audio one is on, so that's telling me audio one is on, but I could have audio follows video um, and various other options. And then this becomes an audio level control for audio one. If I press the audio two button, there's nothing illuminated. Audio two is currently off. But again, I could have audio follows video, et cetera. And this is the volume control. We have uh, memories for eight macros built into it. So we can program different effects, picture, picture in picture effects, chroma key effects, and recall them very carefully. You have internal recording to the SD card, or you can record to an SSD drive or memory stick connected to one of the two USB-C slots that it has on the back of it. And we also have our playback controls for clip playback when you're playing clips. Below here, we've got our on-air buttons. So this is telling me that the downstream key, oh, let me get me out of the way. This is telling me that the downstream key is on-air. And if I was to bring the key on air now, it's bringing the picture in picture effect, which is set up in the key on as well. Um, and I can also, if I do that and that, now I can mix and mix back. So this is telling me what the next effect will be. If I go back to background, turn the key off, I now am just with the key. So it's a really quite simple device to use. Um, I find it uh, quite easy to, to manage uh, just with the front panel. And another thing that really, for me, separates this from the Artem devices, which I really like, is the ability to control its setup without needing a computer. So with an Artem, you, have, you run your software on a computer, and you can then access a lot more of the controls of the Vision Mixer to, control, to change a lot of the settings, things like Kia settings and stuff like that. And if I just go to the laptop for a minute, let's bring the laptop on here, up on here. This is um, on my laptop, and you can see we have something very similar. I have quite detailed controls in here. I can set up which um, clip's going to be played back next in my player. I can change all of my various things, and I can change all my settings, what, how my output form is format is, my sources, you can see I could reconfigure the multi-viewer and the HDMI outputs here, um, mic settings, um, multi-view displays, I can change things around in here, I've got a couple of different options. So I can, tr can control the, um, the switcher from a computer, which is great if you have a computer, and it's a really nice little piece of software. But very often, you know, you don't always want or you won't always have a computer available. It's another piece of kit you've got to take with you on the production, something else to set up. You might want to control it directly, and I can do that. So I'm going to bring up the multi-viewer output now. So this is going to look a bit jumbled because we're seeing the multi-viewer on the multi-viewer. But if you look in the lower right corner, we see where the audio meters currently are. If I press the menu button on the control panel, I can bring up the menus, and then I can actually go into 
the menus and I can change my settings. So I can go down here, I can change my inputs between SDI and HDMI. I can change my transition settings. Uh, I can go in and I can change all of the things, 99% of the things certainly that are in the computer control panel. Um, I could change my chroma key settings and things like that. Um, I can uh, go down here if I go to the deeper settings. I can go down and I can change, for example, I've got um, one of my sources is HDMI, not SDI. So SDI one is uh, input one is currently set to SDI. So I can go in and change all of those settings without uh, actually needing a computer. And, and that's a really nice thing on this as well that I really like. It does have a fan in it. Um, it tends to be a tiny bit noisier than the Artem's, but it's not terribly noisy. It's not very loud. I haven't noticed it ever really sort of ramping up and things like that. So in that regard, I find it to be perfectly acceptable. It runs off 12 volts. And in fact, we'll go from, I think it's about 12 volts up to 16 volts. So running it off a car battery, uh, a V-mount battery, things like that is perfectly fine if you're trying to set, do a very portable setup. There is on the back of it an Ethernet port for direct connection to the Internet. And then using that direct connection, you can stream to three platforms simultaneously. So you could stream to YouTube, as I am now, Facebook and another platform at the same time. So it can actually create three parallel streams and stream those without needing a computer. You do obviously need to set up stream keys and things like that. And there is actually an application to run on the computer to save those stream keys and then transfer them from the computer to the GoStream as a little file. And it makes setting up those uh, stream keys and everything like that really, really simple. Now it is limited to HD as most of these smaller devices are, but generally still for web streaming and stuff like I'm doing right now, HD is probably all you actually need. So ov overall, as you can probably tell, I really like it. It's not a lot more expensive than the sort of basic Artem Mini. So it, you're not having to pay a great deal extra to get that SDI input, the two HDMI outputs, streaming to three streams at once, and all the extra things that it does. And so far, it's proven to be very reliable. And well, what more can I say? I, I do really like it. And I think it's a really nice little piece of kit um, that I, I can happily recommend. Now, I did this as a stream so I could show you what the device could do. I also, of course, have managed to show people how to upset the device by picking it up midstream. It's never a good idea to, to pick up your main device halfway through the stream to try and show the back of it. Um, but if you like this stream, I will try and do more on different products. Tomorrow at the same time, I'm going to take a look at this device here, which is another part. I, I, I forgot to say, part of the reason for getting this was I'm building a mobile production suite. I have a camper van, and it will be able to go into the camper van um, for small multi-camera live jobs. And when talking of multi-cameras, I did mention earlier as well, you can actually get five cameras into this. So when you buy it, if you update the firmware to the latest version, that latest version also gives you a free NDI license. So you can bring in a networked camera over NDI. The USB slots, one of those USB-C slots can also be used for a UVC camera. So that's a camera that's capable of web streaming itself. A lot of, um, obviously, webcams, uh, Sony's FX30 and all of the sort of newer cameras coming on the market now have a UVC output. So that would give you a fifth camera, either via NDI or UVC. Um, so there's lots of devices that could come in that way. Um, but the reason for getting it is I'm building this mobile production unit um, for festivals, for events, uh, conferences, and things like that, four camera. Uh, switching unit. You can go in the camper van um, if necessary or in flight cases. So I'm kind of putting together all the kit to make that work, which includes things like remote heads, pan and tilt, uh, controlled remotely. I've got a cable cam that we can control remotely. I've, in fact, I've got a couple of those. So if you're interested in the cable cams, I can do um, a live stream on those. Um, and another one of the devices that's going to be important with all of this is actually going to be this. 
This is actually an Exxon Master uh, 4K, uh, Cineview Master 4K. And this is an extremely low latency wireless transmission system. I've been using the Cineview um, products a while now, and they're really reliable. This is their first sort of 4K product. So this can uh, connect a camera in 4K. The mixer, though, is only HD. But in HD, the latency on this is exceptionally low. So if you're pulling focus, controlling the camera remotely, it's particularly good product for that. So tomorrow, same time tomorrow, four o'clock UK time, 11 o'clock New York, eight o'clock LA, I'm gonna take a look at this device. So do come back tomorrow if you're interested in learning more about that. So um, no questions have come up. I realize there's not many people actually watching right now, but this people will be able to watch this later on and see the quality that this device delivers. Thank you for watching. I apologize for the problems early on and having to go to a different stream. It's one of the YouTube issues that if the camera goes down, then you have to restart the stream. And I had to restart this as a separate and new stream. So if you like this, let me know, send me a message on Facebook uh, or YouTube or wherever, and I'll do more live streams. Thanks for watching. Goodbye for now.